Hi everyone, Brightbone here. And today I want to talk to you about automating the reversals of C2 beacons. Right? We've used CyberChef in several of these videos to reverse beacons, but we never took it a step further of automation or doing this in a fashion that's repeatable, right? It was always, let's just pull the recipe onto the system and show you how to do it. But I want to take it a step further today and show you how you can kind of automate this with Postman. Once you've seen it done in Postman, you can code it into whatever language your organization uses, whether that's Python or PowerShell, to post these kind of recipes up. So once you get the feel for it, you can post it to the CyberChef server API and do these kinds of reversals. So to start, we have a covenant grunt here in our CyberChef that is in my local lab here. Notice it's not secure. So if you're gonna stand this up, make sure it's behind a VPN or something like that. And then we have the CyberChef server API, and this is the Swagger file for the CyberChef server API. And this is gonna tell us how we can build out these recipes to push things up to the server and have it return us values in the method that we need. But to start this, we need to at least do the reversal one time. So we're gonna do a quick reversal here of this covenant grunt through PowerShell, and then we will save the recipe out and use it in our Postman push to the Cyber CyberChef server API. So let's start with our regex, our typical regular expression. And I'm gonna do my normal open A to Z, A to Z, zero to nine, front slash plus close brackets or braces, and then we'll open brackets, 40 comma close brackets. And you see it's now highlighted all the base 64. <clears throat> As I've said before, uh, the covenant grunt uses a compression, but in the top of the log, if you look really close, you're gonna see deflate, which means we will need to inflate this memory stream. So remember that when you're doing these reversals. So instead of highlight matches, we're gonna go list matches now, and then we will go from base 64. So base 64, from base 64 right here. Now notice this does not look right because it is not inflated. So we want to now inflate. So we will raw inflate. And then we want to remove null bytes just to make it readable. Remove null bytes. You can also change the ASCII type around to remove the null bytes. But now we start to see the familiar MZ and this program cannot be run in DOS mode. So now we know we've got the executable out that we need. So simply now we want to kind of run strings on it and extract the IP. So if we extract type, extract IP addresses. <clears throat> we now have the IP that this was run from 10.44.222. So what we want to do is we want to take this and automate this reversal, right? I don't want to have to pull in all of these different pieces and remember, oh, hey, it's a covenant grunt. I have to inflate the stream versus deflate the stream. That's good knowledge to have, but it doesn't behoove you as an investigator to keep that knowledge in your head when you can put it into something that's automated, right? So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna take this log, but we're gonna take a look at the Swagger UI and we're going to see how we submit this, right? So we are going to do a request body of application JSON. It's a post slash bake. And then this is the parameters of our post. So let's put one of these together. We'll do a new one right here. We'll switch this to post. This is Postman. If you're not familiar with this application, take a look at it, really cool. And we're gonna do the IP of our server, 192.168.136.225, port 3000, and bake. Now port 3000 is the default for the CyberChef API server, or the CyberChef server, where you can post things to the API. So that's our post URL. Now, we need our body. 
So our body is going to be raw and then JSON. So that puts in the header application JSON right here, right? That matches this. So we now got our post, our URL, and our application JSON. <clears throat> now we just need to put in our JSON values. Now this is pretty simple. We're going to start with our body. We're going to go open brackets. We'll go a space down. Then we're going to do input colon. But inside input, we need that. And it will go green, and you have the colon on the outside. And then we're going to do recipe. Was that colon on the outside? <clears throat> so this is the beginnings of our Cyber Chef recipe. Now it's going to throw errors here because we don't have anything in here. We need a key and then a value. Key value pairs, right? That's what JSON uses. Key value pairs. So we now need our value. <clears throat> our first value is the log. So we'll take the entirety of our log here all the way to the end. And we can do this with Covenant Grunt. Can't so much do it with Cobalt Strike because there's a lot of things that have to be escaped in there. But you can do it with a Covenant Grunt. And we'll paste this in. Go ahead and paste that between those two. And we have open. And then at the very end, we need a comma. <coughs> so that's our first key value pair. Uh, we may need a second one of these because it didn't go white. No, it looks okay. At least for now. We'll take a look here in a minute just to make sure that everything is good when we submit it. But we'll probably need a comma here for so. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and put one there. And now we're going to get our recipe. So how do we get our recipe? We simply hit save here, and then we choose clean JSON. And then take everything in here, all the way, including the braces. And we put that after recipe. So we'll just paste that in. And now notice it does not show any errors. So I don't see any red check marks. There's nothing highlighted. It looks OK. So if I hit Beautify now, you can see this looks like normal key value pairs. So the fact that it looks like normal key value pairs means that we should be able to submit this and get the exact same artifacts out of the post as we do out of CyberChef, so we should get a 10.44222. Now, sometimes you have to play with the typing inside here. You may have to give it a type of string or a type of different value, depending on what you want to come out. But once you figured that out, you no longer have to worry about this again. So I'm going to go ahead and hit send. Let's see if it works for shot. And it did. It gives me 10.44222. Now it does have a new line at the end. And then 10.44222, right there. So we have basically just automated, to a point automated, the reversal of a covenant grunt. I now just take the log, paste it into input, and hit send. If I'm good with Python or PowerShell, I can easily write a script that you literally just paste this in as an argument and then send it on to the CyberChef API for automatic reversal. If you have a source system, you can automate this into a source system. So then you can do advanced analysis, very advanced analysis with simple API calls, right? CyberChef lets us do very in-depth an analysis of a lot of things. For example, if I just wanted to base 64 something, on base 64 something and have it send me back the results in whatever fashion I could, Right. If I wanted to, you know, look for a certain variable in there, I could do that with a simple API push and the value coming back into whatever system. Right. So quite simple. Now you can do this thing, same thing with Cobalt Strike. Now a Cobalt Strike 
the log is a little bit more full of things that need to be escaped, right? It is not URL safe. So a lot of the time you would have to have a first pass of something doing a regex on that log to pull out the base 64. This is the base 64 from a Cobalt Strike stager beacon, not the stage list, but a stager beacon. And if I submit this, there it goes. It gives me the IP address. Now I'll wipe that out just so you guys can see it actually work. But it, uh, it does send and actually receive a value. And this is my Cali box that I have Cobalt Strike on in my lab. So now you can see there's pretty easy ways to use CyberChef in ways you might not have originally thought, right? You don't always have to use a recipe and pull things in. You can analyze it one time and then automate it from then on. So this just gives you the ability to take it into whatever language you want, post it. Now, one little tip I'll give you. If you don't want to use Postman, you can simply use curl for this. And a lot of systems will support curl or support some method like curl, right? You do not have to use this full Postman. If I go to code over here, it gives me the curl output. This is literally the curl syntax that I would need to do this exact same thing. It also will translate it into all these different code languages for me, right? Here's wget. Here's Node.js. Here's Python. Here's PowerShell. So you can use this to your advantage. Start with Postman, write your scripts from here, and then it will give you all the different pieces that you need to put that into your automation frameworks. And that's basically all I have for this week. Thank you guys. Please like and subscribe. And uh, <clears throat> I will leave you with Hack the Planet to defend better. Thank you.